My name is Jasmine Mushwidi. I'm the CEO of Pillars and Pride of Africa. And I started my business in 2009. Okay, first, I used to be a model many years, many years back before um, I took interest in how I saw uh, model managers then, how they managed the business and how I felt they made money from the business. I felt, okay, I'm sure getting into the business would be more interesting and more adventurous. So I had to get into it. It's very important you have the right talent and the right models. The modeling industry, modeling in quotes, has to do with beauty, looks, appearance, carriage. So you have to have models and talent who can exhibit such. For the female models, especially, you need to be tall, from 5'8 and above, then dress size 8 and to like 14. You need to be curvy. And um, being light-skinned is also very important because they believe, clients believe people who are light-skinned are more friend, camera, camera friendly and they're more attractive to look at. Then um, many other things, you need to look glamorous, you need to look well-groomed, so that the requirements we all look out for and our clients also look out for. So we need to give to them what they already, what they want. Otherwise, I mean, they might just uh, blacklist you that, okay, you're not performing properly. Normally, clients will favor such looks because they know once the public sees such on their products, they'll want to go for it, believing that, okay, when they begin to use such products, they would eventually begin to look like what they have on the pack. And for them to sell, they need to put a look or a certain feature there or, or lady who would attract the public, who wants to make public pick up their products. So, and the public now believing that, okay, wow, this pretty girl on this product, I'm, I definitely will be looking as light as this when I buy this product. And then they go for such. So, that, so those are the reasons why such looks are usually favored in the industry. Because if you go otherwise and put a different look, I mean, people will not even notice your products on the shelf. You need to be fine, good looking, because I mean, I'm out to make money. It's very important. I mean, it's, it, I'm, I'm in business to make money. So my clients want good looking people. First, first I have to look out, I'll have to ask you, okay, your height, send me your pictures. And don't send me pictures with filters or edited photographs. I will make it clear to you. Send me your clear photographs without filters. Once you send them to me, I might, I might even go ahead and ask you, okay, send me a video of yourself. So I'll be very sure that you haven't gone to do any editing on your videos or on your picture. And when I see, the, see your photographs or your pictures and they're good enough, I mean, you meet, you meet, with, you meet up with the, with the client's requirements, then that is, a, I mean, you should be tall light skin, good dentition, she have a good, great smile, and um, well-groomed, then definitely you have an edge above um, others who don't have all those qualities you already, you, I, I can see. My experience with brands so far has been um, quite interesting over the years. For instance, um, in the beauty industry, clients will always want to request that we send them photographs of models. In the area of brand activation, the client would insist that the girls have to be tall. They have to, uh, uh, from the body size, dress size, size eight to size 14, because what the girls will have hips, they need them to be tall, they're light skinned, because these girls will be standing physically at um, uh, activ activation bars or supermarkets. And I mean, they believe once these girls are attractive enough, Clients want to stop by and look at their product because of the girls who are there. Then even the guys, they want the guys, guys who are tall, broad chested, who look very manly and macho. So because these are the things that make, you can't just bring somebody who's looking a certain way and then you put the person there. Even yourself, you would look and pass. You wouldn't even know a, 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 a product is even there for you to even look at to buy. We need to put sentiment aside and do what we have to do because it's business, first of all. You need to make your money and, I mean, so you can pay your bills. So I, I don't think, I mean, it's, 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 for me, I think it's right 
the way it's being done is, is right. And anybody who feels offended can go ahead and probably work on themselves, groom themselves, go online and find out how to work on yourself. They've really not been so good for the female in the industry. Though they, they, are the up, they have the good side as well, but let me start with the downside of it. Because a lot of them feel, okay, that there's a bias in the system, that why are they not picking them for jobs? And before, I mean, they don't, they don't get jobs. They don't make money. A lot of them don't make money because they don't look that, that certain way. And they begin to feel that even the agency, Pillars and Pride, is being selective or being biased and not wanting to pick them because of how they look. And it's not really our fault. I mean, I mean we are, it's an industry. And we need to give the client what they want. So, but what, what we do is that we encourage them to look, just go and work on yourself. And, or you hold on, when the time comes for your own brief, then we'll give you your job. But I mean, that time may never come. So, but we just have to encourage them to just, I mean, just, just hold on until the time comes by God's grace for them. <laughs> Imagine being told that your looks don't match your voice and be constantly picked on because you have small sized breasts. Solitude became my best friend back in school. While I was undressing to have my back, one of my roommates saw me undressing. Um, she said to me, open your door. You didn't matter me, Tara. Me go see me, and in English, what she said was, if other girls are bringing out breasts, you are bringing out this piece of farm fruit. That was hot thing coming from a fellow female. And it made me to start feeling ugly, both inward and outward. In fact, I lost my self-confidence. I am not there yet. I am a work in progress, irrespective I am living my life, trying to be better, living at my terms, and of course, coming out of this stereotype that I'm not beautiful. Hi. Hello. What's your name? I'm Jasmine Ophelia. My name is Blessing. Nice to meet you, Jasmine. Nice to meet you too. So um, you were talking earlier about um, expectations as to the kind of people your industry would accept. Um, first, let me ask you, what would you define as beauty? Um, I need specifics, like the person must be this, in my industry, beauty is when you look attractive enough for a client to book. That's beauty. That's one side of the beauty. Of beauty. And again, by in my industry, beauty is when you look good enough for the public to accept you. You should be tall. You should have hips. You should have lovely complexion, light skin, very healthy looking skin. You should have beautiful dentition, well aligned. I mean, those are the basics. Okay. And with that, you should be able to get a very good job in my industry. Okay, now with this that you've mentioned, you mentioned the person has to be curvy, has to be tall, the person um, has to have good dentition, mm -hmm. light skin. Mm -hmm. With all of these that you've mentioned, do you think I am beautiful? Well, in, in the normal society, of course, you are beautiful. But in my industry, we need to sell. Okay. We need to sell the kind of look, looks our clients would want us to bring for them. So in my industry, for you, I wouldn't, you may not have a chance like that. You may not really, really have that chance to get booked for jobs in my industry. So I would want to deceive you. It would be very, very difficult for you to get jobs. Why growing up, I had always dreamt of being a model. 
And now, things like this that you've just mentioned uh, was one of the reasons why I, you know, kept that aspiration aside. Okay. Because, you know, if you are looking at it in the real sense, mm -hmm. I am not of a big size, mm -hmm. of course, and I'm sure uh, modeling agencies, they look at that too. Mm -hmm. So I'm now wondering why, why you mentioned that um, I do not stand a chance in, in your industry. I'm just wondering why. Uh, okay, let's say uh, my industry is a money-making industry. Okay. It's not a charity industry. So uh, we need to give our clients what will make them pay us. So we need to get them models based on their specification. And they hardly ask for requirements based on what you would want them to ask. They hardly. What they want is people who are tall, people who are light skinned or car caramel skinned, or even if you're dark skinned, should be very healthy dark skinned. Then you should, you should have hips. You should be busty. Even if you're not too busty, at least when you wear a fitted outfit, you should look attractive. So those are very, very important criteria in the industry. And I don't think anybody will want to bend for that because if you bend, you'll be left behind. Okay, so someone like me that is not busty, that is not curvaceous, I do not stand a chance, that's what you're saying, by industry standards. Mm, yeah. I believe you are a stakeholder in your, in your industry. Very true. And um, as a stakeholder, you... You have this leverage, you know, over the kind of information you would like other people to, to get from you. You are, you're one of the people in your industry that can um, raise a point, that can champion a cause. Why, why don't you change the narrative from your own end? Because what you've said, it, it's... It's really, really demoralizing to me. I had mentioned before that mm -hmm. I had wanted to be a model, you know, while I was growing up. Maybe because of my kind of body, I think, yes, it fits in. But now hearing it from someone who is in it, I, you know, when someone have, um, have this feeling that they do not stand a chance mm -hmm. at achieving their goals, it has, it, it, it there's this, um, negative impact mm -hmm. it has Very on true. how they think, how they see themselves, and how they react to people. Okay. So don't you think you can, you can help change this narrative from your own end? I understand that you're a businesswoman, and you know the industry is all about making money. Yes, money making is good, but should we make money and, you know, reduce being humane or should we make money and just not look at humanity because people are different and the way they see things too are different. I think it's not enough for you to dream and want to be a model. Before you begin to dream and want to be something, you should do your research to know where you can fit into that industry. There may be a value chain in that industry, industry where you can fit into. It mustn't be be the model. Like I'm sure I want you to be a musician while I was growing up. But I'm not singing now, I'm doing something else. So I mean, we all have dreams. So you can, if you're so passionate about the industry, then you can find somewhere to fit in. It mustn't really be modeling. And about changing the narrative, well, maybe in the future that will be done, but right now, we have bills to pay. Nothing is smiling now, the company is not smiling now. So nobody would even begin to think of trying to change, what narrative do you want to change? At my own expense, as I don't get, so maybe later on we'll do that. Maybe we'll have a foundation for change of narrative here. But right now, what narrate more we're narrating now? <laughs> All you've said now, it would, it would only make me do one thing. Number one, it would only make me to um, get body enhancement products to increase my hips because I don't have them. It would also make me to um, increase my breasts because 
my breast size is small. And it would also make me to, you know, change the color of my skin, applying lots of chemicals and all of those things, which I do not want to and cannot from my own point of view. There's really nothing I can say. I mean, it's, 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 it's sad and I really sympathize with you, but I mean, that is, it's what it is. Jasmine, you represent an industry that has created what I consider a negative beauty stereotype. I also represent a wider spectrum of women who feel insufficient and not good enough. How many Nigerians look like these models that you find on billboards and on products? Isn't it about time for real inclusion? Also, are Nigerians generally tall, light-skinned, curvy? Are they? Why then is it okay to sell to Nigerians using people who look nothing like them? Have you ever advised your clients on what to do, especially as it regards them picking um, someone who is competent over someone who has the beauty standards that your industry has set? Mm, well, I, it doesn't really cross my mind, but um, no, it hasn't really crossed my mind. Because basically, as a business person, I only focus on the business angle, but it really hasn't crossed my mind. So maybe that could be looked into, but it hasn't crossed my mind too far. I see your concerns actually. So I will make efforts to sensitize my, my, my clients, my colleagues in the industry so that we can bring in and include um, models of different looks, body types in the, in, into the industry. But I wouldn't do that at the expense of my, of my business because I mean, I, I'm a businesswoman and I still need to make money. So, but I will try all I can to push or to, to, to push this to, and see what they have to say. If they take it up, then all well and good for everybody. I am a work in progress. I am on my beauty journey. I am a talented woman with so much to offer. And I'll continue to put myself and my skills and talents out, irrespective of whatever standards or stereotypes that exist. And I encourage every other woman out there to do the same.